<laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to take the lessons that we learned in the last video, and we're going to actually apply them to a more real-world situation. And we're going to make this material. And as we're doing it, we're going to start learning about exposing parameters and getting some functionality into our materials. So what I've done here is uh, this middle band here, the fancy tiles, we can change their color. And you'll notice that as, you know, that, that we've got different colors going on here. We're using one method here to change the color, and then we're using a different method to actually just change the color of the background as well. So this is giving us a tremendous amount of functionality in the color of our material. And we can also move it according to this offset. And that means that, you know, we can go ahead and take this material and then incorporate it into something larger and make any kinds of adjustments to this band of, um, of fancy tiles in the material. And this is what we're going to do today. So without further ado, let's get into substance. And this is the material that I made for the test. So, you know, it's got, it's got some stuff going on, but it's not overly complicated. I've spread things out so it looks a lot bigger than it actually is. All right, let's get started. First thing, file, new substance. And we're going to use this PBR template and we'll call it fancy tiles. I'm going to I'm going to work it at 2k so I'm just going to leave this as is. All this is doing is telling me what the default parent size is going to be when it pops up the graph. So this can always get changed later on. Right. Let's go ahead and save our file and I'm going to save it next to the other one. And we're ready to go. We're going to use this very same template. We're not adding or subtracting any kind. Well, we're not going to use the metallic. Um so we can get rid of this. And then the other thing I like to do, there's no rules here. I just like, it's my preference to have the height next to the normal simply because it makes it easier for my brain to understand because these two actually kind of work together. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have, I got rid of that metallic, but what we are missing, I do want to add an ambient occlusion. Um, I could have just switched that, the use of that node over, but since I got rid of it, I'm going to make another one. I'm going to, come here, add node output. I'm going to make sure I've got that node selected. And then I have to set up its usage. I'm going to call this ambient occlusion. I'm going to give it a label. Now this is its unique identifier. This is the label that people see uh, when they're looking at the input output nodes. And this is the business end of it. This is the identifier. This tells substance what designation this node has. And you'll notice there's a long list of stuff here. So it's really very utile. And we are going to use ambient occlusion. And this is the name that appears up here. This is the label that I've created. And then the unique identifier is there as well. Okay, we've got our nodes set up and if we go back to the original test material, just so I just want to show you what we're going to work on first. First thing we're first area we're going to deal with is this area here. Now I need to create a mask that's going to separate this fancy area out from the regular bricks. So that's what we're going to be doing first. And to do that, I need a grayscale white. And this color is at 2K. I don't need this color at 2K. I need this color at 256. You're just, it, it's, if you'll notice this number down here, this is in milliseconds how long it takes to process. And it changes as we lower down the resolution. It's not really accurate right now because it's got it's it's not really calculating against anything. Take my word for it. Less res is gonna is gonna be less calculation. It's not always true. I mean, like bringing it down to something really small doesn't necessarily make it less 
difficult to process. Each node has its own specific sweet spot as far as being its most efficient. And that's kind of advanced stuff. Optimizing the material is, you know, it, it's very touchy-feely and it's pretty advanced. But just as a general rule, because I did the research and I looked it up with Substance Designer, if you're going to use a flat color, according to the documentation, parent minus four is your ideal situation for uh, just the flat uniform color if you're just going to be using it like that. This does not apply to everything. This applies only to uniform colors. So we're going to, since we're not really doing anything with it, I'm going to set it down to parent minus four. I'm going to get a transform node because I actually have to create a mask with this. I don't want this coming out at 128 by 128. I want this at parent size. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the output size and instead of having it get its information relative to the input, in other words, getting its information from the previous node, I want it to get its information relative to parent. So that means it's going to be looking, instead of looking to the previous node for its info, it's looking for this number. So this immediately took this white color, and now we've got a flat white color at 2K instead of a 128 by 128. You know what? I'm going to hook up our 3D view. So let's set this up so we can see it in 3D. I'm going to get another white here. Well, actually, I don't even need to do that. I'll just borrow this guy here. This ambient occlusion... See what happened there? There's nothing coming. This is this is a flat black. There's like literally, it's a black hole. There's literally nothing to see because we added this ambient occlusion, but it's completely black because if you see a node like this and it's all checkerboard, what it's reading is black. There's nothing there. And everything is occluded. So there's no light touching anything. And that's why until I actually create an ambient occlusion map, I'm going to take this white and I'm going to pop it in there. And all of a sudden, we can see our color, normals, height, and roughness, which are all set at zero. So they're all black, but we're getting that reflection now. And that's, we can tell that those, you know, those outputs are actually working now. Eventually, we'll change this out. Normally, I just drag a white in here, but since I already have one here, I'm just going to use this. Now, if we look at our 2D view here, I'm going to hit this one to one, and that's just going to bring the whole thing in. I want to make that middle band. So I'm holding my control key as I'm moving this down, and that's just doing it from the center. If I don't hold the control key, it's going to do that. But I'm not getting the band because it's tiling. So I need to also make it stop tiling. And to do that, I'm going to come into tiling mode. And again, same deal. Instead of getting its information relative to input. So this is getting tiled. That means this is getting tiled. I don't want it relative to parent because parent is also going to tile just like this. I want to set it to absolute. And that means it is a standalone node. It is completely unaffected by anything going on around it. And all of a sudden, my tiling mode drop down list becomes available. So I can set it to any one of these tiling nodes that I want, a uh, tiling modes rather that I want. I want it to tile horizontally because I, I want to have black space up here, but I do want it to tile along the X. And now I get my band. And if I click on my 2D view and hit the space bar, I can also see how it tiles. Oops, didn't want to do that. And it's tiling horizontally, but it's not tiling vertically. So now I can adjust this band to the size that I want. And this is just the interior fancy tiles. We're going to add the, um, the border. You know, it's going to be a different color, but it's going to be the same tiles as the, the background. So we're going to kind of do it in two spots. So right now I'm looking for the size of just those diagonal tiles. And if I put my mouse over the area, it's showing me the border of my single UV space. So I can kind of, you know, see how it looks relative to, you know, like one square. I'm kind of liking that. I think that's okay. So we'll stick with that size. And next thing we need to do 
is put something in there. So I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to get my shape node, this one right here. And I'm going to create that diagonal brick texture. Now I'm going to save some time here and just plug in the numbers that I had to actually make these diagonal bricks. And as we're going through it, it's going to look wrong right up until it looks right. And I highly recommend that you spend some time with this node and get to know it a little bit because it can do some really cool things just by moving shapes around. And it's a really great node to get patterns that you can manipulate using functions. So this is a highly, highly useful node. And since every single one of these sliders can be manipulated by a function, it's one of the nodes that I actually use a great deal when I'm making procedural materials. We've got this pattern that we want, but it's taking up the entire thing, and that's why we have this mask here. So let's start hooking this up. You'll see why we need that in a minute, but let's hook it up with that first. So I'm going to put that in my foreground. If I put nothing in my background, by default, it's going to be black. If the mode is color, it'll give me checkerboard. If the mode is grayscale, it will actually look black. So all I really need to do is drop this mask in there because, you know, it just gives me that black background by default. And now I can see what these look like according to um, how it's actually going to look in my material. Now, I think I want to bring the tiling down a little bit. I mean, tiling up a little bit, rather. And that gives me a size that I'm happier with. However, it's not appearing where I want it to appear. And that's what this guy is for. Because I can just have this transform 2D node and just manually move it around until its actual placement is where I want it. So like that. And let's take a closer look. Do I like how these edges look? Yeah. Okay. Now. Let's put this into our material so we can see what's going on. And, well, I don't know if I notice a problem. Uh, and that is if we apply the brick material, you know, like the plain brick material to this the way it is, there's not going to be like a grout line in here. And we need to add a grout line to this business here. So that means we have to come back into this mask and do some more to it. So this is our basic mask, but we want to create a secondary piece that's going to add a line of roughly this thickness to the outer edge of this. A really good way of doing this, it's quick and dirty, but it works really well, is to take my original image here and blur it out. So I'm going from something slightly smaller to these blurred edges make it a little bit bigger, except they're now in grayscale. And I can get rid of that by adding a levels node and getting rid of those grayscale values. So I can bring that white right up to the edge. So now I have a thinner version and a thicker version. And if I get another blend node, Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to invert this gray. I, I, I actually need it the opposite. I'm going to get an invert. So now it's black here. And this time I'm going to use a light and blend. So what this has done is it's it, the light and blend in on any given pixel, it's going to pick whichever color is lighter. So I've got this black background and I'm putting a white foreground on it. And between the two of those, it will always, in the blend, it's going to pick the, um, the lighter color. But that line is too thick now. So I can come back into my, I'm double clicking on this. I got a single click on my blur. And this way I can see what's going on in this node while I'm working on this node. And I'm going to bring that blur intensity down until it gives me a line that I'm happy with. I don't like that. I want to bring it down so these two touch. 
And that's a question of coming back to my original. I'm holding down my control key and I can fix that like that. Except it's cutting this one a little bit more. So now I can come to this transform and center those exactly on my material. This is set to step at point one or point oh one rather. You can add a third digit. Uh, a third decimal if you want. So that actually centers it. Okay. So we're getting there. We're getting there. And then I actually had, I widened the whole thing out again. I must have had a reason to do it. You know, it's been a, it's been a bit since I made this material originally. Uh, but I'm just going to repeat this process and now just do it to the whole thing. So I had this set at 0.191. I mean, 1.91. So, you know, it's taken the whole thing, made it a bit bigger. And we're going to grab another levels node. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're just going to clean that up. Just do it the other way. I know why I did it. Because it, it gives me this smoother um, edge between the two of them. If you look at this one, it's kind of crispy. And these edges are, they look like they're two different things. Now it looks like one thing. Okay, so that's our fancy tiles, and I'm going to draw a frame around that. I'm holding down the control key. Get rid of that. I'm going to move these guys out. I'll give them their own frame. We call this fancy interior. And I like using frames because I can then just like move this stuff around easily. And it makes it much easier to organize. All right, so we got our fancy tiles done. Next on our list is to do the background tiles. Yeah, so we're going to get another. Actually, I'm just going to duplicate this guy. Um, and we're going to set this up to give us just regular bricks. I have the tiling at three here. So we're going to want them a little bit bigger. Uh, we're going to keep the same pattern specific number. We're going to bring this turn back to zero. And now we've got this weirdness again, but that's because these numbers don't fit. And we want it to be one on the X and 0.5 on the Y. So each brick is, you know, it's, it's a one to five ratio, but we've got, you know, that band problem. And this is, this is what we did in the last video. I mean, we, we already know how to do this. We're just going to get a transform 2D node. And we're just going to offset everything by 0.5. We're going to grab our blend note. We're going to put these two guys together. And we're going to use a light and blend. And we've got our bricks. And we're going to kind of do the same dealy here with slightly different numbers to get these guys to kind of meld together as well. And for this one, I had 1.83. And we'll grab another levels node. And we'll get those looking nice as well. Now it's a question of putting the two of them together. So we want to put this guy on top of these guys. But we're going to have to use a mask to get that to happen. And I'm going to use... Nope, that's the opposite of what I want to do. So I'm going to use this guy. I think in my notes I had the, the two of these guys reversed. It doesn't really matter. Just these two are the same mask, just in reverse. And this is just how I generally work. I will, when I make something like that, I'll pair them up like this, so just so I know that they're exactly the same thing. And I can use them interchangeably when I need to mask stuff. But here we are. We've, we've got our basic pattern done. Uh, we've laid one on top of the other, and we're ready to move on. When we get to doing the colors, we'll, well, you know, it's probably easier to look at it in the test material. What I want to work on now is these sides of the tiles, because, you know, they, they don't have this glaze on top of them, so they're going to be a different color. It's going to be like the raw terracotta of the tile as opposed to the glazed terracotta. 
and it's different from the grout. So what we need to do is make a mask that's going to just talk about these areas here. Let's save this. We haven't saved it for a while. Okay, so how do we do that? Let's come back to these two masks here because we're going to need to split up this space in between into two, two different things, the, the tile sides and the grout. And we've really already kind of got this done. We, we've got one of the masks. This one is dealing with the wider area. And then if we duplicate this and instead plug in the versions of these bricks or tiles before we widened them out. Remember, we blurred it, we made it a bit wider, and we created new levels. So we've got the thicker version up here and the thinner version down here. And we can use these two versions to split up that space in between. So let's get an invert grayscale, and we're going to invert the thicker version. So now it's white. And then I'm going to get a gradient map and I'm going to plug this guy into the gradient map. I'm also going to make it grayscale because I need it to match up with this one because we're going to blend them together and you, you can't blend a color with a grayscale. Once you've put in one of these, so now, now this blend has become committed to grayscale. And for example, if we turn this back again to color, it's going to give us an error. So it's saying this is a mismatch. But if I turn it back to grayscale, it works great. And I want to make this a darkened blend. And that means that any given pixel is going to pick out the darker color. So I've got kind of an edge here. It's not the shape that I wanted, though. I mean, it's doing the right idea. But I need to take this gradient map. It's going to allow me to assign new tones to the existing grayscale. I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to single click on my gradient map. I'm going to get into my gradient editor. We're going to click on this here. And as I move this down, I'm assigning lighter and lighter colors to these what used to be very dark grays. And now they're being assigned much lighter colors. And in this way, I can change the shape of what's going on in my final mask. So this is going to give me those tile sides. Now, I can change this even further by going into, let's see, yeah, the, these two bricks are, you know, they're, they're doing two different things. So we might have to come back into these blurs and, and deal with it. Let's do the plain ones first. Okay, I'm going to change those sides. Let's come back into this gradient map and maybe move that back just a tad. And let's see what this has done to these guys. We could come back in here, and maybe give them a little bit more side. I'm happier with that. And now we have a mask that's going to be able to differentiate between what's going on for our grout and what's going on with the sides of our tiles. Okay, so we've got the basic look, and the only thing that we really need to do now, uh, as far as masks go, is to create the areas where we're going to want our different colors. So we have our fancy, fancy tiles, the ones with the pattern, and that's going to have a particular kind of thing going on. Then we have this thin band of border tiles, and then we have the plain tiles. So we need to create three distinct places where we can actually put color. And, you know, it's all based off of, you know, it starts with this. So th we already have this. This is our fancy, this band right in here, just the fancy tiles. So I'm going to get another transform 2D, and I'm going to put, I, I don't even actually need to do that. I could, you know, let's just put it directly in there. That's really the right way to you know, the right way to do that. But I am going to want. I don't know why I got rid of that. 
I am going to want another transform 2D, which I'm going to just plug into the white. And again, we're going to set the tiling mode to absolute, and we're going to set this to horizontal tiling. And this one is going to represent the color for the outside tiles. Just to make it easier to, to see what I'm doing, I'm going to do something temporarily here. I'm going to, well, it's just, yeah, I'll do it with a color. It's just easier to see. Uh, I'm going to temporarily turn this into something else, like a some kind of intermediate gray. And I'm going to bring this opacity down a little bit. So I'm double clicking on that, single clicking on my transform. And now as I um, hold down control and move this up, I can actually see what I'm doing. Again, this is a temporary thing. I'm I'm matching. I, I need to match up my patterns and my colors. And sometimes it's just easier to overlay things like this. Just using temporary blends. So let's get this squared away. Again, I'm holding down control. I just want to make sure that it's covering my tiles. I'm going to try to get it somewhere in the middle here because I know I'm going to have different colors in here. And I'm only really worrying about the tile tops. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. So I can go ahead and plug this back into my white and I can get rid of these guys right here. So we've got our where okay, so we've got we've got the the fancy tiles here. We've got the color zone for the base here. And we want to pull out our bands. You know what? I just, I was looking at my notes. I just figured out a simpler way of doing this. I saved this step. We do a darken here. We can just cut it out like that. And we're going to need eventually an inverted version of that too. And we are also going to need to have a mask that has both of these together. So I am going to also invert this guy here because that's got the two of them together. Just to make sure uh, this I I this is completely different from my notes because I I actually had it more complicated in my notes and I just realized that there was a simpler way of doing this. So this should be the same size as that, uh, except they're at different resolutions. So let's see where our resolution problem. Oh, it's because it's coming from this one. Okay. I have to make this relative to parent. So when I compare this one, it should have the same line here, there. Yeah. So these two lay on top of each other. Good. That's what we needed. So we have two sets of masks here. We have three sets of masks because we've got this guy back here as well. So I'm just 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 to make it simpler to to get, I'm just going to make a copy of it just by putting it on a transform 2D so we we can actually see them all lined up. This is this here is completely unnecessary. I'm just it's a redundancy, but it lets us look at them together. So we have are in a mask for the insides, the the super fancy tiles here, for their color. We have a mask for the color, either positive or negative, for that band that's going to go along the side here. And then we've got a third mask that covers the fancy tiles and their border. And these are going to be the three masks that we need to make the color happen. Because if you think about it, 
uh, the background is the background. So we really only need to worry about adding a different color here, adding a different color here, and then separating whatever, whatever we've done to here and here from the background. And that's what these two are for. So let's frame these up and we'll call these color masks. And we're ready for the next step. And that would be making the colors. So let's start with the fancy ones. I'm going to go into my substance library and I'm going to grab up a bitmap that I already have. Now, obviously, you don't have the same one and you're going to get to pick whatever you want for your pattern. I'm going to use this guy that I used for the um, for the test material and it's a uh, 512 by 512 it's small it doesn't have to be big uh the only important thing about the image that you use is that you have you know that it doesn't come up against the corners we're going to be turning this by 45 degrees and that means that it needs a pretty wide Birth as far as border goes if you don't want to start getting tiling problems you know it's a pattern on top of a tile so you know you can find something on google you might already have something in your inventory uh but whatever you use just you know make sure that you know proportionately it's roughly like this so you've got something in the middle and then you know like a lot of space on the outside the next thing we're need we're going to need to get is a splatter node now you'll notice we have two different versions. There's one for color, one for grayscale, and then there's one that's circular, and then the one that just splatters, splatters. The splatter node is going to be the closest thing you're going to get to an effects map before you learn how to make effects maps, which is a little bit more advanced. You can learn a lot about a lot by right-clicking on most of the nodes that you see in the library and hitting open reference and this will let you open it as a read only and you keep can keep digging down so in other words i can get into this effect map go edit effects map and it'll show me how this effect was made and you can see you know it, it's it's not beginner stuff so we're not actually gonna be doing effects maps just yet eventually we'll get to them but the splatter node is um driven by this effects map and it gives you pretty much a lot of it gives you a lot of the functionality that you can get by making your own effects maps the 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 bonus of making custom ones is that you don't necessarily have to carry a lot of calculations that are going on in here if you don't need them so you know it, it probably has more than you need for any given job so it's probably a little bit more expensive than making it on your own. But uh, the upside is you don't need to know how to make an effects map to get a lot of the functionality straight out of the box. So uh, for a while, we're going to be using splatter nodes um, quite often. And once, you know, once we start making our own effects maps, generally speaking, um, uh, I've stopped using splatter nodes. But it's it's an awesome node because you've got all of these various options that are pretty much directly driven by the effects map. So with that lecture being said, let's plug this guy in and see what happens. We can pan. We can change the disorder. We can change the disorder angle. We can have it be random. We're not going to want it. That, I mean, I'm not going to want it that way. You can fool around and make your own pattern. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I am going to rotate it. Where is rotation. So you can rotate them. You can also set the rotation variation so it doesn't rotate them all the same. Again, I decided I wanted an even pattern, and I had the rotation set at negative 45 because we've got those tiles set the fancy tiles we rotated these guys at 45 so i just set the rotation in the splatter node just so it matches what's going on in the tile but again that's not something you necessarily have to do you can fool around at other things be careful with the zoom it's going to mess with your tiling uh gain is just how white stuff is 
Uh, yeah, we've pretty much gone through these. This is this is a fun one. Um, go ahead and fool around with it on your own time, and uh, you can you can actually get a bunch of different stuff done. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to grab another gradient map, and I'm going to assign some colors to these patterns. Now, I plan on changing colors. So what I'm going for here is to make sure that they're, they're, they match, but they're different enough so that as I change their hue, which is how we're going to change the color for this, as the hue changes, um, there's enough sort of variation between the two that you continue to see the color. So let's, I think, maybe go with a yellow, a nice warm yellow. I think that's good. And we don't, I mean, if you've got grayscales that you want to deal with, you can make your edges sharper by doing this. But I'm pretty happy with it the way it is because this, this is a pretty, you know, clean edge here. So it's giving me a really good gradient map. Okay, next, we're going to put in this hue saturation lightness node, and we can kind of test to see how our colors work with each other as we drag them through here. It only really works from 1 to 0.5. It just repeats itself as you go up the scale. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So, you know, as I'm changing, I like the way that, I like the way the color changes, basically. So I'm just testing for that, and if I don't, I can come back into my gradient map and, and change it. But I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now, this is one of the things that we're going to apply an input parameter to. So a little bit later on, we're going to come up in here and we're going to make this so people can manipulate it in the material. But let's let's finish up the the fancy colors first so we can um, look at them all together. Right, so that's going to take care of our interior. I'm going to want also a color for the border. And I'm going to want my border to be matchy with whatever's going on in here. But at the same time, it's got to be different. So we're going to do that in a couple of different ways. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever I've got coming out of here. And I'm just going to really, 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 really make it very blurry. So it's pretty much just averaging out whatever is happening in here. But it, it's much closer to a solid color than this is. And then I'm going to get another hue saturation lightness node. And I'm going to change it. Just, you know, so it's different, but not too different. You know, let, let's let's hook these guys up so we can actually see what's going on now. I think we've got enough information that we can start looking at it in the 3D view. What's coming out of here is for our fancy tiles. So I have to find a mask that's going to match that. And that mask is this one right here. Because that is the colors of our tile. So I'm going to stick it in here and it's giving me what I need. It's giving me more than what I need, but we'll take care of that in a minute by getting another blend node and getting that into getting this interior mask in there. So now we just have those bricks. Now we need to make a mask for this guy. We'll plug that in there, and we want, actually we're going to do that second. We want to take the brick pattern, so we're going to cut out the colors for the brick pattern first, and then we're going to get another blend node, and we're going to assign it the zone that it's going to go into, which is going to be those bands. And I've got a background space here. And I've got an output here, and I'm going to plug those two together. And now we've added them in. So we have our border and we have our interior tiles. And now all we need to do is add our background. I'm just going to get a plain color for that one. Let's find something nice. We're going with the oranges, so let's do something a little funky. We'll get that chartreuse in there. 
and we're going to do the same thing. It's actually, I'm going to just duplicate this guy because we're using the same bricks. We're just going to change the color. But we now have to cut out everything that's going on in here. And so I want to have this one right here because I'm putting those green bricks on top. So they need, they're the ones that need to get masked out. And I'm going to cut that hole in there and I will pass that through. Let's plug her in, see what happens. Oh, did I just plug it into the wrong thing? Ah, yes, I did. So that's our ambient occlusion. Put the white back in there for now and put this in our color. There we go. So anything that's checkerboard right now is black, but this is giving us our colors. So we're starting to see what it's going to look like. Okay, so we've got our colors hooked up, and now what I want to do is I want to make them procedural. So we already said we're going to use this one to change the hue. Now, we're going to do this a couple different ways. Let's, um, I can create an input parameter from scratch by double clicking on the graph and coming into input parameters and hitting this new input parameter it will automatically create an identifier because this has to be unique. So, you know, you, you, we're going to go ahead and change this. The next thing, it's going to ask what kind of parameter is this? We have floats, uh, which is just kind of a floating, you know, decimal number. You can slide it up a scale. We have integers, which is whole numbers. We have booleans and we have strings. And the numbers after them indicate how many, um, so X, Y, Z, and W. So for example, let's do this one first. Our color is, has got four, it's a float four. It's got red, green, blue, and alpha. So it's got the RGB channels and an alpha. And that means it's got four floats that carry its information. It is therefore a float four. Now I can come in to create a float four here. Let's call this test. Okay. And then I can label it test. Uh, we can also group them, which we'll do later, but I just kind of want to do the, the basic concept first because there's more than one, there's more than one way to skin this cat. So we've got, we just hand created one here. I can do something else. I can also expose it directly from here. Now, if I hit expose, it's going to select the name of the new input. And it's going to give me a drop down list of anything that I already have that fits the parameters. In other words, uh, you know, whatever I've created, or I can create a new one, or I can use the one that's already been assigned to it, in which case it's called output color. I'm going to click OK. And if I come back into my input parameters, you'll see that it went ahead and created that float four. I can also come in here. I'm back in my color. I can clear out any input parameters I've put in there and that automatically brings it back to default. So any color I had put, I mean, it lost any information that was there. It brought it back to default, which is black in this case. So, you know, any of, any of these here fit the, um, the criteria of float four. So I create a test. I can put that in there and the default set on test were at white because I didn't touch them. So it's now replaced it with that. Once I've assigned an input parameter to something, I can no longer change anything in the node itself. I have to change it through the input parameters. I'm going to get rid of output color because that's the one that we didn't use. And I'm going to change this name from test to background color. And we'll call the group tile colors. So now I am going, I want to have, um, I want to have this set as a default. I also want to change the way that uh, people interact with it. And depending on what you set in here, 
uh, it's going to give you different options for what those interfaces are. So float one could be a slider, an angle, it could be a grayscale, grayscale color. So you, you can decide on whatever uh, user interface you want to go on with this. And in this particular case, I want a color wheel because it's just going to make it a lot easier to pick a color. So, you know, come in here and pick a color. And the other thing that we have here is this little icon here switches to the preview mode uh, as you would, as the end user would see it in the game engine. And this is where th those groups come in because you can create little drop down lists within um, like your slider menu. Now, if I change the color in here and I switch back to the preview mode, you'll notice that it switched back to whatever default I had set in here. If I'm in here and I change the color and then I hit apply, when I come back into here, it's going to stick. So I, I do like that chartreuse though. So I'm going to put that back there. All right, so we've got our background color squared away. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to change this guy here. And we want to be able to change the hue. So I'm going to, let's just expose it. We can use the name, ah, you know what? I want to make my own because I want to have, I want to give it my own name and I'd come up, I'd come in here anyway and change the name later anyway. So let's just do it this way. Uh, we're going to call this fancy color and we're going to call this fancy tiles. So if we come into the group now under tile colors, we have the background and then we have fancy tile color. We haven't hooked it in yet, but this is just going to be that one float because we're only going to be changing the hue. Come in here. We've made our input parameter. So it's actually on our list here. And all we have to do is click it and we can come back into here now and change our default. So as we change that default, this is what it's going to set it as. Like I said, point, you know, it, it's, it's doubling up. So it's only really using the first half of that slider. Later on, we can get, once we learn a little bit more, we can get fancier with that. So, you know, we can use functions to kind of negate that, but let's get a grip on what it's actually doing first. So that's a pretty funky, right? So we have fancy color. And expand that to include the border. I think I want, wait a minute. I want it a bit more blurry, I think. I can't blur that out even more. Ah, it's good enough for government work. But what I, I do want it more contrasty, so I'm going to uh, make it darker. That's not something anybody's going to change. The hue is going to stay the same, but it, I think it just gives a, it's better like that, I think. So we've got that set in. Now we need to take care of the rest of our um, outputs. And then at the end, we're going to add one more input parameter that's going to move the whole thing around. Actually, we also um, need to make the, the color for the grout and tile sides, but that's all part and parcel of the same idea. I'm going to get a couple of noises here. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to get clouds one and dirt one. Feel free to, to use other things. I just thought that these would, would work well for what we need. I'm also going to step these down. We really don't need them at parent size. So I'm going to do in parent minus two, which if we're at 2K, is going to, they're going to read at 512. So whatever this is, it's going to divide it by four. And the clouds we're going to use for, um, actually, no, I, I want cloud. I don't want clouds too. I want, I want the softer one. This, this one is um, kind of grainy. I think it's clouds one. It's clouds two. Yeah, I always get those two mixed up. I want something nice and soft because this is going to be, um, well, for a couple of things, but um, for the tops of the tiles. 
but you know, let, let's, let's finish up this grout first. I'm going to get a transform 2d because I'm going to take this very same clouds and I'm going to make it considerably smaller. And I'm going to use that as the, um, as, as the coloring for the sides of my tiles. I'm going to get a gradient map. And I'm now making the, the quote unquote terracotta color that lives on the sides of the tiles. So it's going to be kind of this orangey terracotta color. I don't know what you would, call, you know, whatever. Pick a color you like. Whatever makes you happy. But I'm just, I'm looking for a very slight variation between them. So it's not all just a big flat color. You know, it's, it's got some variety to it. And we're going to plug in that mask we made for our tile sides. Here we go. Oh, first we need a blend node though. So that's our tile sides. And then we're going to need a color for the actual grout. And I'm not really going to worry too much about, you know, we could make we could make a second um, gradient map of this. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to pick a nice color, to, you know, a nice warm gray, and we can put that in there, and that'll give us that interior. So we've got the colors here. We're going to need another blend node. But this time we're going to lay it on top, I think. No, let's not. Let's do this because we've already got them cut out. Yeah, I'm, let's see if we can't make these a little bit better. I don't know if I can. Let's... Uh, Yeah, okay. You know, fool around with it how you want. I think that's a little bit better. It's to do with this shape node. It's because of the 45 degree angle, it's doing weird things. Oh, it's better. And maybe come down in this one and just make it. Maybe a little bit more matchy. I want to make that line between the two of them smaller, too. I mean, it is two different sets of bricks, so I think that that's going to be okay. All right, so let's plug that in. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I Let's just make sure we have our height set in before we start messing around with that. I'm going to Materials, Default, Edit. And this is where I can set the tiling and my height scale, which I'm going to set to 1. I mean, we don't have any height set in there yet, but once we start messing around with that, it's going to give us our height in the renderer. Okay, so I am now officially happy with the colors and I'm ready to move on with everything else. I'm going to get into my library. I'm going to height to normal. And I'm going to start gathering up normals for my tiles. I want something for my little uh, little flowers here. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to leave this I'm going to use that node later for like my really deep normals. I'm going to use this normals node instead. It's a little bit less expensive computationally and it'll get the job done. I'll just plug that in and I'm going to bump the intensity up a little bit to three. Then the other thing I'm going to need is a normal for uh, the actual surface of the tiles. So, you know, here we've got these designs and he, here we've got the surface of the actually here we've got the designs plus surface of the tiles 
and here we have just surface of the tiles. So let's get, yeah, let's move this out front here. In fact, let's get our outputs and move them someplace reasonable. So we're going to want this for the surface of our tiles, but I think I don't want it. This is a little too bumpy, so I'm going to put a levels node in here first, and we're going to blend these two guys, and I'm going to use an overlay blend. I've got a resolution problem here. I, this is coming off of um, this guy here, which is a quarter size. So we're going to have to come into this normal, and we're going to have to make it relative to parent. And now these two sizes match up. Uh, in the blend node, as I was saying, we're going to do an overlay blend. And that's going to lay one of them on top of the other. Let's plug it in. And then we're going to go back to that levels node and we're going to start adjusting stuff. Now, obviously, we're going to need to cut this stuff out. In fact, let's just do this first because it's a little distracting. I want to get the, the surface of my tiles. So I'm going for, I'm pretty happy with that as it is. Let's maybe smooth it out just a little bit. So, you know, if you want them rougher, you can make them rougher if you want them smoother you can make them smoother and as far as these guys go yeah I think I might want to tone it down just a bit again you know you do do those how you need them uh, but I only want it happening on the tops of those tiles so to do that I have to make another mask now, we, we've got all the fixings here. Let's get a blend node. And we want this last one here, which deals with the just the colors of our fancy tiles. But we, own, we don't want it like in this area here. We only want it in here. So we're going to have to block that out. And... I can just mask it out because it's a grayscale. Remember, by default, that's a black. And this mask will only put those designs on top of the areas where it needs it. So it's actually cutting it out. But everywhere else, it's tile texture. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add normal for the grout. So we've got this nice rough normal. I'll just jack that up to three. Now, we've got the tile sides here, but it's actually going to have to get inverted again because, well, yeah, no, we're going to want to lay it on top. So... I'm I'm off my notes slightly. Um, I ended up doing some things differently, so I'm not quite matching up at the end here. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. I want to invert this guy. No, wrong again. <laughs> I actually want to do this one because, wait, no, this one. That's my skinny little grout bits. And then we can lay them on top of what we've already got going on that should work for us yeah because that's you know that we've still got the relatively smooth bits of the of the tile sides and only that roughness in the grout and finally yeah so smooth 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 rough uh but we need to get the, the whole definition in there and that's what this last height to normal is for, because that's going to give us sort of a, a, a chunkier uh, result. And I want to find, wait, this is ours. That's the one I want. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see which one we like best. This one's got, I think this one will work better because it's got more grayscale to it. Get another blend. We can, um, let's put this one on top of this one. And again, we're going to use an overlay. No, that doesn't match. Hmm. 
that matches. But I don't like how it looks. Um, I'm going to try something here. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Let's see if we can bring a bevel node in here. And it's got its own normal. And I like that a lot better. So let's use that instead. Let's see how it looks with angular corners. I like that better too. Okay. So change a plan. Yeah, sometimes you just got to experiment. But I think that that's that's nice now. I'm happy with that. So the normals the normals look good. Next on the list we have height. And as luck would have it, uh the bevel node provides its own height. So let's see how that works. It's going to make us do this. I This makes me so pissed off. I hate that. But we're just going to re replace that back in. Uh, yeah, so rather than using the other height map, I think we'll use the one from the bevel. Yeah, so getting there, getting there. Maybe a little still too chunky as far as the as far as this is concerned. I think the normal is set in right. I just think the actual surface is still too rough. So I'm going to just lighten it up. So it's smoother. All right, and we have one more output left to go, and that's our roughness. Right, I'm just going to make a frame around this. Right, so we have our roughness. We've got, let's think about our zones. We've got tile. Then we have sides of tiles, which are going to be not quite as shiny as the tiles themselves. And then we've got the grout. So we need to set up a bunch of blend nodes with those masks. All right, so tiles, what am I going to use? I'm going to come into my levels, I mean, into my normals nodes, because I'm trying to think of how am I going to best do this with the least amount of node usage and I think basically repeating what what's happening here will work for us I'm going to get a normal to height we don't need the HQ I'm just going to get the regular one and I'm going to convert it's kind of an expensive node so I only really want to do it the one time and I might even take it down a notch let's bring it down to parent minus one and then we'll step it back up again because I'm just getting general it, you know it's such a um I'm only right now I'm not worried about the edges let's put it that way right now I'm worried about the surfaces of pretty much everything that's going on that's not in the grout and to do the roughness because it is such a mushy it really is I mean it, it's 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 a tile whether whether it's bumpy up here or the flat version of the tile, it's still roughness wise, it's still very, very close to each other. So I'm not really going to stress the resolution of this height to normal, which is what I'm going to be basing my roughness on. But it really does change the amount of processing that it takes. Okay, that was a lot of words. Uh, so I'm going to start with this, and then I'm going to get a bunch of level zones. And I'm going to mask out my zones. I've got now, because I've, I'm dealing with the end result, I've only really got two zones. I've got um, this grout and everything else. So I need two levels nodes. I'm going to blend them. And I'm going to use my the bigger of my two masks for this one. So on top, we have everything except for the grout. And at the bottom, we have the grout. So I'm double clicking on this. I'm single clicking on this. And as I bring that up, because I've got this grayscale set in here, it's also kind of hitting the edges of my of my tiles. I mean, yeah, the, like the tile edges. So we can do the opposite here. 
So, you know, the, the tops of my tie, the, what, where we have the design, you know, you figure that the tops with, with tiles, it's probably going to get a little bit less shiny because it, it's like getting chipped and, you know, it's more exposed to surface weathering. But so it's ever so slightly rougher. We could get fancy and do a second, although I don't think I'm going to do that. We could we can make a second mask in here, just like we did with the tile side, so that you can do a separate opacity, I mean, a separate roughness for the tile sides, but I, I'm not going to bother with that. I think it looks nice the way it is. And that's us done, I think. Let's clean this, make sure we've got everything we're not using is taken off. We'll make a frame around this, call it roughness. And let's publish it out and see what it looks like in our substance player. Oh, you know what we didn't do? Oh my, we, we skipped like the most important part, I just realized. We want to be able to take this whole thing and, and move it around. Wow, can't believe I forgot that. And we didn't do the uh, ambient occlusion. Okay, I'm going to use this. Again, we've got our normal to height. So all we really need is an ambient occlusion. And this node is just going to do an AO straight off of the height. And we can, we can set it uh, so it's not using quite so much juice. First of all, these are tiles, and we don't need a, well, we need some height depth, but not that much. That's fine, leave that alone. The, the important thing is to set this G, GPU optimization to true, and that makes a big difference as far as the processing goes. And finally, uh, I'm going to start this on the color. Actually, I might as well start it on the AO. We're going to want to move all of these guys. No, I, it, it's just easier to show you with the color. We're going to be, we're going to want to be able to adjust this texture. We're going to want to offset it on the X and the Y. And that means we're going to either expose it or make a new input. I'm going to, create a new name for it. So I'm just going to double click on my graph here and I'm just going to add it by hand. And we're going to call this tiles offset. And we're not going to have a group for it. Um, the default I'm going to set to zero. I'm going to set my minimum to negative one. And this way people can move it however they want. In fact, I, I'm not even sure that it needs to get set to negative one. Um, but you know that that's you you set the you set the um the minimum and the maximum and then what clamp does is if you set this to true it won't allow the end user to override whatever your minimums and your maximums are if it's set to false they can manually enter different numbers in there so i've got this one done the way i like it i'm going to come in here i'm going did I not make a variable? Ah, uh, that's what I didn't do. Uh, it's a float too. So I have to set this to float too. Then when I come back in here, it appears on my drop down list. So I've got this one done and I'm just going to duplicate it out four more times and then just apply it all my other outputs. Now we're going to publish it out and see what it looks like. And here we are. It's looking pretty good. We've got our tile colors that we can change. We've got our fancy tiles we can change. And we can take the whole thing and move it around. So, you know, depending on where I'm using this material, I can have the, that band of decoration anywhere in there. And, you know, we can also see what it looks like if we tile it up a little bit. Pull that out. 
uh, we can set this will let you do like weird tilings. Um, but if you wanted to, if you want, if you're actually testing your tiling, I think you should just do whole numbers. But yeah, I'm digging it. And I'm thinking that for the next uh, video, we're going to take this material that we made and we're going to learn how to, we're going to make us, we're going to make another material and then we're going to take this one and we're going to merge the two of them together. And we're going to also learn then how to take these parameters that we exposed in this material and then carry them over into the next material that we make so we we can actually re-expose them in the new material that we made. But I think this is pretty good. And we're just going to keep building on from here. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.